test one, two, test one, two. Here I am in a podcast room. <clears throat> I'm just uh, testing this video out. I had a, I did some rearranging, and um, this uh, podcast has been a, looks like a tornado hit it for the last three, four days, just completely rearranging a lot of things. Um, but right now, I'm testing this out because I unplugged everything and put everything back and changed some lights around and whatnot, and and here I am. You know, um, I know I haven't been doing a devotional. If you want to call it excuses, but this is a real fact, is that it's been a crazy, crazy last four weeks. And you guys already know most of it because uh, <clears throat> obviously on on uh, Holy Week, starting Palm Sunday, you know, uh, our brother-in-law passed away, Sharon's brother-in-law, her, her little sister's husband, and uh, it was a horrible car accident. And uh, and then we went right into Palm Palm Sunday, and then Sharon went uh, to Utah for most of that week, and then I was running Holy Week along with the staff here at the church. And then um, then she got back, and within days we were off to Houston. So even those days building up to Houston, Sharon had just been back, and um, so that took a lot. And then we were gone for an entire week. And then we got back from Houston and um, I got sick, really sick, like a flu. It wasn't the Rona, but uh, I got really sick and uh, that had me laid out. And I think, I, matter of fact, last week I remember coming in just for the Wednesday Bible study and immediately went home. And um, Thank God that I didn't preach because I probably wouldn't have been able to because Pastor Moses was here and he preached. And um, so not only was I sick that whole week, but then we had Pastor Moses with us the entire weekend until Monday. And then um, after that, uh, which was this week, then Sharon got sick and Abraham got sick. And... uh, it's been, it's been, uh, man, it's like been nonstop. Then my son's car got stolen. Um, this was on Tuesday or Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday, late Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. And uh, we ended up, had a tracking on it. We followed it all the way to Oakland. We're trying to figure out where it was at. We had like four locations where it was pinging at and then it stopped pinging. Got home at 5.30 um, in the morning, slept till 2.30 and then did Bible study. Um, so I'm still not, my voice still is not back. It's not completely gone. Sharon is finally feeling a little better today. And um, and then we had a lot of rearranging to do. And that's all we've pretty much been doing um, yesterday. And now today, the grocery giveaway is tomorrow morning. And um, so the groceries got dropped off early in the morning, so we had to rush over here and um, get all the food ready for tomorrow morning. Now tomorrow we have the grocery giveaway, and then Sunday I have Sunday service. So, um, but I did uh, make some changes in my arrangements here where I would be able to use the podcast room a whole lot more. I know I've said that before, so I'm not going to say it again. I'm just going to do it and not talk about it but everything's rewired everything's redone um we got some i got all the angles working we got that angle working and we have this angle working Let's see um, oh that one's frozen actually because that should be showing me but anyways um is that one frozen too oh yeah no it's not so then um like i said um just getting everything straightened up, straightened out, and put in a better position so uh, we can do more of these videos for you guys, you know. But uh, other than that, guys, um, other than that, uh, just wanted to say hello. God bless you. I will be preaching this Sunday. I have a, a sermon that's been on my heart um, ever since Pastor Moses was here, and um, I'm really excited to be able to share that on Sunday morning. 
Um, but other than that, um, like I said, I'm just testing things out, making sure I put everything back the way it was, making sure all three cameras, but apparently that one is frozen up, so I didn't realize it till I restarted recording. Uh, but it's supposed to be where I have one camera, two camera, and then the third angle. But anyways, I uh, just want to say God bless you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being a part of this channel. Thank you for hanging on. Um, and I'm praying for, for better things for this channel, you know, and uh, it's been quite um, an acclimation. And I know it might sound like, man, that was a long time ago because when we moved in this building, we had a grand opening in September. And uh, that's what September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. That's eight months ago, and you would think, like, by now we'd have this thing down. But to go from a small warehouse church to this has been a huge culture shock, more than I expected. Nothing, nothing that can't be handled, but nevertheless, um, you know, every time I say this, too, I will say this. I don't know if I've ever said it before, but every time I've changed buildings, because you got to understand, I started first at La Quinta. It was a hotel, banquet room, was there for a month. And I don't really count that because then I went to the basement where I had 20 chairs. And then uh, from the basement, I went to a building, lost that building after a year, went into a karate school that was closed on Sundays, and I would, they would let me hold services there. Did a whole year there, maybe a little over a year. Then I went to Hatch Road, which, which was a little medical building that we made it into a church. Um, and then we went to 8th Street. We were there for quite a long time. And then from 8th Street to the warehouse where we were at, and now here. Anyways, I say that whole list because of this, is that every single time that we move, good things happen and awkward things happen. For instance, uh, back in the basement days, uh, let's say that. Back in the basement days, um, there were some solid people that were saying, you know what, we're, we want to help build this church. We want to help grow this church and strengthen this church. But that was a house church. It was in my basement. And the moment I moved into a building after that, they kind of lost heart. They didn't want to be in a big building. They didn't want to be in a building. And these are things I didn't realize. I just thought, hey, the natural thing to do, if we don't, if we don't fit in my basement anymore, the natural progression is to get a building. But some of the biggest supporters of House of Rest, um, for whatever reason, drifted away. But then this is why I say good things happen, because then... Um, new families came, new people came, and this kind of thing happens all the time, you know? And, um, like, one thing I've noticed is uh, um, at the warehouse where we were at, it was literally just a warehouse and a storefront. So the warehouse portion we made into the sanctuary, the storefront portion we made into our lobby, and the office we made into our children's. There was nowhere really to go, so the dynamics of our relationships were different. It was way different, but at the same time, we were bursting at the seams. We needed classrooms. We needed somewhere for the youth. We needed a food pantry, you know, and um, the only way to do that is to grow. But then we come here, and... Um, we we realize really fast that we can't operate exactly exactly the way the warehouse was and these are growing pains and things that we had to learn in these last eight or nine months as we went along you know like for instance we are smack in the middle of downtown there's a a huge issue of of um, mental health uh, uh people out there uh drug addiction um everything is out there and we're right smack in the center of it, which is fine. But at the same time, we have to be um, cautious. We have to use discernment because our children are here. Our wives are here. Our grandmas are here. Our mothers are here. Um, and, and people we love are here. 
at the same time, we want to be embracing to everybody. So we had to learn to balance that, you know. And um, um, like our ushers, there there's certain things they have to be on point with that they didn't really necessarily have to worry about those things at the other warehouse because there's a little bit in a, an industrial area. So you didn't have, like we are on a major street here. Um, if you look at our address, if you type in, if you go on Google Maps and type in 500 Ninth Street, Modesto, California, you're going to see that we're right smack in the middle of the center of the city and in downtown. Like literally, police station is kitty corner to us. The courthouse is two blocks away, the brand new courthouse. Uh, the juvenile, not the juvenile, the, the probation department is a few, three blocks away. The city hall is maybe four blocks away. We're right in the center. So because of that, different dynamics happen and... Uh, and, and sometimes we have to be more strict on certain things because we have to be careful. And, and here's another thing, too, is when we had the warehouse, there was only one entrance, one way in, one way out. And the lobby was where we hung out. So it wasn't necessary to have ushers be slash security guards because we could literally see you coming in or going out because we were right there in the front lobby. But here. There's different entrances, there's different rooms, there's different, there's a youth center, there's children's classrooms, there's, you know, so we have to be more uh, vigilant. We have to be more vigilant during the week, we have to be more vigilant Sunday morning, you know, as, as we have the ushers and the media and the worship team and the teachers, they come early to help set up and if they just leave the doors open and while they're busy setting up, I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a recipe for disaster, you know, but unfortunately, you know, some people don't understand that and they say, oh, you guys are strict or you guys are this. And I mean, what do you do? You know, what do you do? Uh, leave the doors wide open because we've already caught somebody doing drugs in the bathroom. What, uh, whatever that drug is, the people die like the moment they touch it. Somebody was doing that drug in our bathroom. So. These are things that we think about, because what if they left some of that residue in the sink and then your our child goes in to wash their hands? You know, and, and it's it's not it's, it's kind of not fair, you know, sometimes to be said, oh, you guys are are strict or you guys are this. It wasn't like that in the warehouse. Yeah, of course it wasn't because the dynamics were different. My ultimate job is to take care of the flock that's here and your families and, and your children. And, you know, if somebody can't understand that, well, well, well you know, um, I, it is what it is, you know. And then um, another thing, too, is the fact that in the warehouse, um, me and Sharon were pretty much hands on with everything. Um, it was tiring, but nevertheless, we were hands on with everything, whether it was whatever ministry it was. And we realized really fast here with youth, with children, with evangelism, with grocery giveaway, with Bible studies, with different things, um, it was impossible, impossible to do it just me and her. We would have run ourselves ragged. So at that point, you have to begin to delegate. And who do you delegate to? You delegate to the people that are always there next to you. You know, and, and 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 so now we've delegated that, and and you know we have a team, we have a staff, you know, and thank God because we've been going for 13 years with no staff, you know, and um, but I'm so thankful. I thank God for those that we have that are here consistently, out of their own time, you know, they they don't gain nothing from it other than doing it unto the Lord, you know, but I think that, and, and I could be, I could be wrong, but sometimes I feel like I gave delegation to those that are here because we need them. And maybe sometimes other people don't like it because maybe they got used to me and Sharon doing it and they don't like somebody else helping I don't know. Anyways, guys, um, man, of my voice, man, I, I need to get my voice back 100%. But anyways, hopefully, you know, we'll see you Sunday, whether in person or whether here. Um, 
on on this channel a grocery giveaway is every fourth saturday of the month and that is at uh 11 o'clock starts at 11 until about one for two hours so anyways guys uh god bless you thank you so much like i said this was just a test so uh i'm gonna put it out anyways anyways guys uh god bless